Coming up on Arirang News, South Korea posts a current account surplus for May, a turnaround from the deficit the month before. Still, the surplus is only half of what it was a year earlier because of the pandemic. Samsung Electronics beats market expectations with its estimated earnings for the second quarter, profits up 22% on year. LG Electronics also looking better than expected, but earnings down from a year ago. And the head of auto giant Hyundai Motor meets with the chairman of SK Group to discuss a potentially game-changing partnership in making electric vehicles. SK Innovation is one of the world's leading manufacturers of, elect of vehicle batteries. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Stephen Began arrived in South Korea this afternoon for talks with top officials here on topics including North Korea. Just hours before he arrived, however, the North said once again that it will not talk with the U.S. Hong Yu reports. North Korea on Tuesday again rejected the possibility of talks with the U.S. North Korea's Foreign Minister Director General Kon jong gun said in a statement that the regime is not willing to sit across from Americans and that the North's first vice foreign minister, Choi son had made their stance clear last Saturday. Tuesday's statement from the regime also showed displeasure at the South's effort to act as a mediator between Pyongyang and Washington. Kwon said that it is ridiculous that Seoul is acting as if it is the solution to the North Korea-U.S. relationship. He added that the South is only worsening the inter-Korean relationship. Experts say such statement released on the day the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State arrived in Seoul showed the North as trying to emphasize that the U.S. will need a new strategy before resuming talks. Begin arrived by a plane at Osan Air Base in Gyeonggi-do Province on Tuesday afternoon. He will be staying in Seoul for three days and is expected to discuss issues related to the Korean Peninsula and the possibility of resuming talks with Pyongyang. On the second day of his visit, Begin will sit down for talks with Foreign Minister Kang kyung -ha and later with the first Vice Foreign Minister Cho se -yong to discuss key bilateral, regional and global issues. Begin is also meeting with the Special Representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs Lee do -hun, to discuss the nuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. On the last day, he is expected to visit the Blue House to meet top officers newly appointed to diplomacy and security positions. But all eyes are on whether Began has brought a message for the North. Hong Yu, Arirang News. South Korea posted a surplus in its current account for May, a turnaround from the deficit it posted the month before due to COVID-19. But the surplus was only half that seen a year earlier. Yoon Jung-min reports. South Korea's current account bounced back from a deficit the previous month to a surplus in May despite the COVID-19 outbreak. The Bank of Korea said Tuesday that the current account surplus was almost 2.3 billion U.S. dollars. That's a rebound from the deficit in April at the height of the global lockdown, but on-year, the surplus was half of what it was. The goods account surplus was $2.5 billion, down $3 billion on-year. Exports were down over 28 percent, falling for the third consecutive month. Exports of petroleum products and automobiles plummeted in May, while those of ships and semiconductors increased. Exports to most countries decreased, including shipments to the U.S. and Europe. South Korea's current account largely depends on the goods account. The pandemic continues, oil prices remain low, and the U.S.-China trade conflict is being highlighted again. Still, there is hope that exports to China could start to pick up in June. The services account deficit decreased to $480 million, thanks to improvements in travel and transport. The central bank said airlines' passenger revenues declined, but revenues from freight services increased. The travel account deficit has also narrowed to $160 million. The primary income surplus decreased to $540 million, mainly due to lower dividend income. As for the financial account, in May, South Korea's net assets increased by some $3.2 billion. Yoon Jong-min, Arirang News. Samsung Electronics has beaten its earnings forecast for the second quarter of this year, seeing a steep rise in estimated operating profit. And LG Electronics, despite a fall in both operating profit and sales estimates, still did better than expected. Our Kim Jae-hee has the details. 
Samsung Electronics' earnings estimate in the second quarter of this year beat expectations thanks to solid demand for semiconductor chips as the COVID-19 pandemic encouraged more of a non-contact lifestyle. In its earnings guidance on Tuesday, the tech giant said its operating profit for the April to June period this year was an estimated 6.8 billion U.S. dollars. This is a 22.73 percent increase from the same period last year when it was roughly $5.5 billion. But COVID-19-induced shutdowns dragged down Samsung sales 7.36 percent on year to an estimated $43.6 billion. Samsung's better-than-expected chip business appears to be behind the company's overall performance amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Samsung Electronics' second quarter earnings were better than expected thanks to a rise in memory chip prices amid the increase in non-contact activities. The company's semiconductor earnings might be stagnant in the third quarter, but with the smartphone and display sectors expecting solid results, the third quarter earnings overall are likely to further improve. But with the prolonged COVID-19 pandemic and the bitter U.S.-China relationship, there are still downside risks. The global economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic still exists. On top of that, there's also the risk of the semiconductor and display sector facing a downturn if U.S. sanctions fully hit Huawei in September. Meanwhile, LG Electronics posted an earnings decline for the second quarter, but still was above market consensus thanks to its home appliance business exceeding expectations. The company's guidance report said its operating profit estimate in the second quarter was down 24.4 percent on-year and sales were down 17.9 percent. The two companies will release their finalized figures later this month. Kim Jae-hee, Arirang News. South Korea is holding a nationwide retail event called the Donghang Sale to boost consumption. At a week into it, the sales figures have been better than expected. The event has an official show streamed online and it's on home shopping TV channels. Through those, official figures show sales of more than 4.2 million U.S. dollars. In fact, 21 out of 30 items featured on the live stream, including pickled seaweed, have sold out. Also, sales at local traditional markets during the first week jumped more than 7 percent from the week before to around 3.2 million dollars. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you as always for coming on. Thank you for having me today. Well, stocks in New York were up on a surge in the Chinese markets. The Nasdaq had another all-time high. What's the story in the global markets? Yes, the Wall Street closed deeply in the green uh, following the holidays as the tech stocks led the fresh records of Amazon and Netflix share nudged sentiment. Uh, if you look at the uh, macro side, the ISM service index came out, and it was surprisingly high, and it jumped to 57.1 in June, well above expectation of 50.1. Um, as this results came out, uh, the market continued to go up higher despite the concern of the COVID-19 cases. Uh, the seven-day moving average for daily COVID uh, cases in the U.S., climbed to more than 48,000, uh, and that is clearly negative news in terms of the sentiment. But despite that, uh, because of these corporate news, uh, it has expected the overall market to rise strongly. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway the, uh, announced that uh, the purchase of natural gas transmission and storage assets from the Dominion Energy uh, for about 10 billion U.S. dollars worth, uh, this kind of uh, put some positive sentiment towards the possible future economic recovery. Uh, due to that, uh, you saw Dow jumping 1.8 percent, uh, S&P jumped 1.6 percent, and NASDAQ climbed 2.2 percent to show record of 10,434. Um, and the U.S. futures markets are showing slight decline because of the concern about the COVID-19 spread continuing. Uh, but nevertheless, overall liquidity conditions seems to be quite reasonable. I think you're taking probably possible some breather uh, that has affected uh, such in terms of the European market, which is now trading at somewhere between 0.4 to 0.9 percent decline at the current point in time. Well, Korean stocks started out strong today, but that fizzled out not long into the session. What happened in the Kosdaq and the Kospi? 
Right, as you said, uh, Kospi closed down by 1.09%, and Kostak is down slightly by 0.1%. Uh, at the beginning of the market, uh, from 9 o'clock to 10.10, 10, uh, market showed quite strong upward movement. Uh, but ever since 10.10, 10, uh, it started to trade lower and clearly uh, closed at uh, negative territories. Um, the reason for that is because uh, individuals were buyer of the market by 856.4 billion, but continuously the foreign investors and institutions were net sellers. Uh, foreigners were selling 385.6 billion, and um, the institutions sold 464.4 billion. Uh, this kind of move is kind of a bit perturbing because uh, you had a Samsung Electronic reporting 8.1 trillion won of operating profit, which is 22.7 percent year on year, uh, and it is beating estimation of 6.5 trillion uh, operating profits. Uh, I think that you know market seems kind of taking as a sell on the news kind of event. Uh, foreigners were the major seller of Samsung Electronics as well. Um, however, though, if you look at the overall condition of the market, domestic liquidity continues to be very strong. Uh, the money supply growth rates remaining quite strong as well. Uh, so hopefully the market could recover after the options future uh, options closing day, which is Thursday. Uh, overall, uh, the overall conditions of the equity market seems to be saying that it needs to take some breather after a strong rally. Well, Mr. Yu, we're almost out of time, but what do you say about the current account surplus Korea posted in the month of May? Yes, current account surplus came in at uh, quite uh, lower uh, and narrowed uh, to 2.29 billion in May from 5.18 billion uh, in the same month previous year. Uh, and that actually affected negatively in terms of the Korean one to the U.S. dollar rate, uh, which was as low as 11.92. Now it's back up to 11.96. Uh, clearly, uh, overall uh, condition is negative in the sense that the export numbers need to pick up. Uh, as you know, that the steel is down year on year. Uh, hopefully, by the second half of this year, uh, the numbers should turn to positive uh, if the global economy does recover as expected. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, thanks so much for sharing your insights today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. South Korean auto giant Hyundai Motor Group is looking to form an alliance with another Korean firm to make electric vehicles. In the latest such effort, the heir apparent to Hyundai Group met today with the chairman of SK Group and toured an SK battery plant. Um ji has more. Hyundai Motor Group Executive Vice Chairman Jong Hee-sun met with SK Group Chairman Choi Tae-won at SK Innovation's battery factory in Seosan, Chungcheongnam-do Province on Tuesday, seeking to bolster their partnership. During the meeting, they discussed potential cooperation over batteries for electric cars. Jung said the meeting was a meaningful chance to share the future direction of electric car batteries and other new technologies the two firms are developing. Che said as Hyundai and Kia Motors are leading players in the future mobility field, cooperation would not only be helpful for both companies but also for the South Korean economy as a whole. He added that both firms need to work together to cope with the fallout from COVID-19. This is Jung's third meeting with executives of local conglomerates that make batteries following his meeting with LG Group Chairman Gu Gang Mo last month and Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee Jae Yong in May to discuss possible cooperation. An expert says cooperation could be useful as South Korea has a competitive edge in the automobile industry and has the world's best battery producers. Hyundai Motor's goal is to sell around 1 million electric cars globally in 2025. If local automakers and battery producers cooperate, South Korean firms could lead the world's electric car market. According to Korea Automobile Manufacturers Association, Hyundai and Kia Motors ranked fourth in sales in the global electric vehicle market in the first quarter of this year, selling more than 24,000 electric cars. As Hyundai Motor Group aims to raise its status in the global electric vehicle market, cooperation with local battery producers could help the car firm achieve its goal. Om Ji-young, Arirang News. 
South Korea's Asiana Airlines has announced it's resuming service from Incheon to the Chinese city of Nanjing, the first time it's reopened a route closed because of the pandemic. It'll start from this coming Sunday, July 12th. For now, just one flight a week each way. China had cut off almost all flights to and from South Korea in March, leaving one route each to only three Korean airlines, including Asiana. Since then, as both countries saw a slowdown in new infections, they've been in negotiations to reopen them. The city of Seoul has opened a new hub for IT startups, specifically startups that could help solve urban problems like health, security, the environment, and infectious diseases. The facility is in the district of Sungsu. Up to 25 startups will be able to move in after an evaluation. They can stay for up to two years, paying monthly rent of just $5 a square meter. There's also space for mobile test beds and for investors who want to support businesses that have a positive impact on society. That brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.